Assalamu alaikum. Today I'm going to be um, giving you a top 10 list of my anticipated games from Origin Sphere as well as UK Games Expo. Now, the convention season is upon us. Even though there is a spike in the COVID uh, numbers right now, which is not good, uh, but let's hope these conventions happen safely and we get to see a lot of new games coming out. Now, there is another event, which is the Gen Con, which is going to happen in August. But within June, there are two events which are happening very close to each other. So first, I think it's the UK Game Expo happens from 3rd June to 5th of June. And then from 8th of June to 12th of June is going to be the Origins Fair in US. And in these events, you can expect new games to be explored. And of course, that builds up uh, anticipation for those games which people have not been able to get. They will be able to get those games as well as give a chance for people to see new games. So, of course, when I am going to make a list, I will be more interested in the games which have not yet been announced uh, or that are new. Those games that have been released uh, will not be in my anticipated games list because I'm not interested in just getting these games. I'm just making this list for the sake of what's new that I'm expecting what's new that people have not yet played so we don't know if these are even going to be good or not but based upon what i have read what i know uh what's my hype about these games now i have clubbed them together uh because i do think most of these games will be available on both of these fairs but some of these games might be available on one but not the other fair uh, so sorry for that because I was making two lists and then make, mixing them together. Uh, so <laughs> be wary that maybe some game is not available uh, out of these. But I did take the actual list of Origins Game Fair and UK Game Expo and then saw which were the games that made me more excited. Now, before I start with the actual list, of course, there are going to be some special mentions. And these special mentions are not the games that are there. These are the games that are not going to be there, that are just going to miss uh, being exposed at these expo and will be coming at Gen Con instead. And of course, these will be making my top tier, uh, my most anticipated ones. Uh, but sadly, they will not be available at Origins or UK Game Expo as far as I have checked. The first one is going to be Clank Dungeon Run. Now, this is a new Clank game, but the event at which they will be uh, letting people play the game is called the Dungeon Run. Uh, they have not, they have been, Direwolf has been really coy about giving a lot of detail about it. What they are saying is this is an event for people organized play for Clank. But in some of the news, they have also said that there will be a reveal of a new Clank game as well. So is Clank Dungeon Run the name of the new game as well? I don't think so because Dungeon Run itself is a separate game uh, not related to Clank. Uh, so I don't think Clank will be using the Clank Dungeon Run. What I do hope they come out with is a Clank Legacy Part 2, uh, a new Clank Legacy because that one was awesome. And it would make me so happy if they announce a second Clank Legacy. But sadly, we'll have to wait till August for that official announcement that what is the new Clank coming out. Then the other one is going to be the Legends of Andor, the Eternal Cold. Now, Legends of Andor came with three uh, main big box uh, games. And we thought the last hope, which was the third one, is going to be the last. But good thing Michael Manzel has come back again and said, no, it's not the last we have heard of these heroes. And there is going to be another game in the series called The Eternal Cold, where we will have to see that what is causing the eternal cold all across the land of Andor. Uh, so a Game of Thrones like setting and we will have to explore what has caused this uh, frigid cold in this one. So those are my, ex uh, um, uh, what you can say is my Ant most anticipated games but sadly which are not going to be either at UK Game Expo or at Origins Game Fair. Now let's get on with the actual list of my top 10 most anticipated games at 
the June conventions. Let's just say that. On number 10 is going to be Trailblazers. Trailblazer is a game coming from Ryan Courtney and those people who have played Ryan Courtney games or have heard of his name will know him from games like Pipeline or Curious Cargo which are uh, or even Bear Raid which are more economic games and he always fiddles around with the concept of scare tiles with pipeline kind of routes and you have to make these routes by those tiles. But Pipeline came with a heavy economic part. Bear Raid came with a heavy um, stock market part. Trailblazer is going to be more on the light side. As the name indicates, it's more about uh, going in the forest, going on hiking, going on kayaking trips. So three kind of trips are available. You will be using these tiles to make your trip, but your trip can only be successful if you make a close loop between two similar kind of stops, two similar kind of camps. So if you start a kayaking trip, you want to stop at a kayaking trip and not run out of tiles before you reach your end point. Uh, so there is kind of a drafting phase as well as tile placement uh, mechanism in this one. Uh, so it's slightly on the lighter side. So I'm hopeful to see that, okay, what Ryan Courtney can do uh, when he goes towards the light side rather than the dark side. So that's number 10, Trailblazer. On number nine is going to be Maple Valley. Maple Valley is, there is not much information about Maple Valley because its Kickstarter is going to come in uh, fall or autumn. Uh, but there is, what they have said is there will be information available at these conventions. Uh, Maple Valley is set in the same kind of universe as Creature Comforts, which was also another game released last year by kids, table board games, with cutesy artwork of these cute, kid-like animals and uh, Maple Valley is actually taking the same concept of these cute animals uh, but now more kids, more kiddish versions and having set collection kind of thing. Now set collection is can be done in a lot of wrong ways as well as there is not much information available uh, because thousands of games are available for set collection. So I will have to see and wait that what kind of set collection this game is going to do, which makes it differentiate other than the beautiful artwork, which makes it differentiate from the others. But what the description says that the Maple Valley kids are going to be running, climbing, uh, swimming to collect these different kind of resources uh, to help their parents. And so is there kind of a movement and not just card play? Uh, so that makes me more interested in the game. So I'm excited to see what they come up with. So that's number nine, Creature Comforts Universe Maple Valley. On number eight is going to be an Oink game, Town 66. Those people who know Oink games, they come in a small sturdy box, uh, very small form factor and very clean one design they always focus on and that one idea they execute very perfectly or at least they try to. Town 66 concept is very good because there are going to be these different tiles in this one with different shapes of towns. These are going to be different shapes or and different colors, different patterns and you are required to on your turn place one of these tiles in either a row or a column adjacent to an existing tile on the board. But the rule that you have to follow is that once you place it, you you don't have to match either an existing color or an existing pattern in that row or column. Now that slowly becomes as the rows and columns start to fill up in the grid, it slowly becomes more and more difficult. And that com there comes the second part of the decision. At the end of your turn, you are allowed to draft a new tile, which will add to more flexibility for you for your next turn or you don't draft any tile and you say I'm good with the existing tiles that I have in my hand because the player who wins is the player who finishes all the tiles in their end. So you can take a risk if you think that by the end of the everyone's turn by the time your turn comes back to you you will still be able to play a tile without busting then you can still win the game. So it's a little twist in any simple kind of concept 
that are always fun. So that makes me excited about Town 66. On number seven is going to be Undaunted Stalingrad. Now, Undaunted came with the Normandy, a deck building war game. So you use your deck of cards uh, uh, with motion on a board. So you played these deck of cards to allow your soldiers to move, shoot, whatever. Plus, you get to build your deck, add more cards to your deck, which will uh, add more health and give more activation turns to that specific soldier. Undaunted North Africa came with the addition of vehicles. Now, Undaunted Stalingrad, as per the initial image, there is no details available for this one as well. But as per the initial image, they are going with a more um, normalized scare uh, ticket to rides uh, kind of box form factor, which I prefer. So is there going to be more content in the box? I'm not sure. But uh, so I will be excited, but based on the previous pedigree that they always add new concepts and new gameplay element and not just a new theme. So I will be excited to uh, know what Stalingrad holds uh, when we go to the Russian side of World War. So that's number seven, Undaunted Stalingrad. On number six is going to be Shadow Planet. Now this might be a game not many people have known. Shadow Planet is going to be a, a social detection kind of game, but it's not uh, your typical social detection with just few cards. Uh, it has a game board as well. And what you will be doing is uh, there are three factions or three parties uh, that are actually stranded on a, an, an unknown planet. So they came down in a shuttle, but the shuttle has been damaged. Now their spaceship is rotating around the planet itself. And it has only 12 hours before their spaceship returns back automatically. So they have to fix their shuttle back on the land and then try to get back to their main spaceship and flee. That's the objective of the humans to get away from this weird planet. But there are these shadow characters and that's where the social detection or traitor element is going to come into play who do want to get aboard that spaceship so they want to help humans but if they do go aboard that means they will be because they want to actually kill the humans over in the spaceship and then go to their home planet so they have more sinister motives and then there is a guardian who want, doesn't want anyone to go to leave the planet surface itself. So there are these three different roles that are against each other. And based on player count, you will be uh, adjusting how many players are going to be playing this. So uh, the board element plus this social detection, uh, it may be very interesting. Uh, plus the look of this game is taken from a graphic adventure novel. Uh, so it looks very unique. Uh, so let's Hope it turns out to be very good as well. So that's my number six, Shadow Planet. On number five is going to be Demo Better for Japan. A lot less information is available for Demo. No image of the game board itself is available, but at UK Game Expo, they do promise to show off this game or some information will be available for this game. Uh, so in Demo, the, it's going to be a deck building game, but what it promises is that with the deck building, there is going to be elements of uh, movement on the board. So you will be making, well, there will be two parts of this. So there will be an economic in the campaign mode. There will be an economic mode where you will be developing your own uh, faction, your own colony, uh, whatever you would like to call it. And then there will be the battle mode in which you would be uh, doing the deck building to actually form an army, how you want to form them. Their formations even matter. So there will be some hints or elements of uh, summoner war like uh, placement of these cards on the board which do matter that archers in the back and the uh, spike man or spear man in the front. Uh, where do the uh, horsemen go? Things like that are going to be there. So they say it's inspired from uh, Total War, Shogun Total War, and 
if they can replicate something like that but with the deck building element i love deck building so i am going to be interested the artwork looks beautiful and based on the uh, the other game that they are coming up with a uh, shinjitsu i think i forgot what its name is it's a samurai battling game the artwork really is beautiful uh, the miniatures are beautiful but this one is not supposed to be a miniature game this is a deck building game and uh, so I'm really interested in Daimo Battle for Japan. Now, number four is going to be Rule Benders. Rule Benders can be understood like Flux. Those who have played Flux game, they know that when you play cards, uh, you will play card which will change the rule of the game. And now the winning rule is something different. Rule Benders take that concept, which is uh, luck based, but now makes it more strategic that you will be using different kind of and uh, different timeline decks. So there might be pirates, there might be spaceships, and you will be selecting which aspects in each game you want to play. So there is a lot of replayability and then using those aspects to play the game. Now in this session, uh, the rules might change of winning the game and you will be bending those rules by playing different kind of cards in your favor. So there is a level of control that you have. You are achieving some certain objective, but then you have a control that how you want to bend the rules in your favor that the victory goes towards you. So I will have to see more about this game that how it really works, but the concept is really fascinating that the rules are ever changing in this one. So that's number four, rule benders. On number three is going to be Mortem Medieval Detective. Mortem was on my uh, hot, uh, most anticipated games list of 2022 as well. Mortem Medieval Detective is a detective escape room type detective game, uh, but set in the medieval universe. Now, what it also promises is a deck based um, exploration scheme as well. And what I have heard is that it takes the detection concept of finding items, asking people how you want to press them, interrogating them. It takes it to a limit which no other escape room games have taken or detective games have taken. So I'm really excited about Mortem Medieval Detective to get more exposure in the limelight and uh, be more exposed as compared to Chronicles of Crime or uh, Exit series. Which brings me to number two, which is a kind of a cheat because it's four games in one. It's Exit the Game itself. Now, why it's four games? Because there are going to be four Exit games that uh, Things like Cosmos or Cosmos is going to be showing off at UK Game Expo. And I'm interested in all four of them. So first one is going to be an advent calendar uh, called the Golden Book. Now advent calendar means that each day there are going to be different boxes in this. And each day for the month you will open one of the box, tear it off and there will be puzzle components for one day. You do that puzzle. And that's it. Next day, you will get another puzzle. So it paces out your uh, escape room or puzzle game for your whole month. Now, this is a Christmas theme one. The golden book of Santa Claus has been stolen and you have to find it. So by helping, you can start it in December or last week of November and start playing with your family. One puzzle at a day. If you skip any day, play two puzzles a day. That's up to you. But opening those boxes and revealing that what puzzle comes out today uh, and sometimes based on the previous advent calendar, some puzzles may be linked with each other as well. So that's the first one, the uh, exit advent calendar, the golden book. The second one is the exit jigsaw or puzzle series. Um, uh, and for that one, this time they are going in a kind of a horror themed, a spooky house where the old manor, uh, um, keeper has been lost somewhere in the woods he went somewhere to find the owner of the manor and he has been lost in the woods and now you have to go after him to find him before something bad happens so uh, these jigsaw puzzle ones were really innovative that came out last year or the year before that as well and um so uh, it's really welcoming for me to see another one being made in that series. 
Now, on the more conventional side of exit games are going to be exit the Lord of the Rings. So they have taken an IP and this is set in the Lord of the Rings, the movie timeline. So the Hobbits are still going towards Mordor to deposit, not deposit, <laughs> to throw the ring in uh, the lava in the Mordor. And, uh, and you are a group of Hobbits that are trying to help them. So it takes a very familiar theme. And if you love Lord of the Rings, this is going to actually take you on an adventure in an escape room type style. And the last one is going to be a return to one of their hits, Escape Room, Return to the Abandoned Cabin. Abandoned Cabin was one of their hit games when the Exit series started. And this one and those who have played it, that game was left at kind of a cliffhanger. So this one is going to actually take the story forward because now a policeman has come back to you and said, well, Dr. Author, I think his name was, has escaped. The one who was, uh, who had uh, trapped you in the cabin before. And now we need your help. So he takes you back to the old cabin because you're trying to figure out where did Dr. Author escape or maybe he's going to trap you again. And that's why all these four exit games are going to be enjoyable. Uh, so the lovely themes they have come up with this year. Inca and Marcus Brand have been pretty busy. So that's number two, exit the games. On number one is going to be Empire's End. Empire's End comes from uh, John Declare. John Declare knows no introduction, uh, Space Base, uh, Cubitos, so many good games he has uh, made. Now John Declare has come up with Empire's End, which is kind of a civilization ending game that uh, it's an end of a civilization that is happening so you're not building your civilization you're trying to survive at the end when the civilization is going into ruins now how this game will work is that uh, you can think of it like no thanks as well that different cards or different calamities will come up and now everyone will be bidding resources to avoid that calamity. Let's say a flood comes up. I don't know if flood is there or not, but let's say a flood comes up. So you might have to bid that, okay, I will be spending wood to build a dam to actually avoid this. Everyone will be bidding wood. And uh, the player who bids the least, his city, his empire is going to get flooded. But those who had bid, they will be losing all their wood because they built that dam with that wood and now for the next time another calamity might come which might be even worse than the previous calamity and so there will be a push your luck element there will be an auction bidding mechanism so even though it's an empire game or uh, being the word civilization is being used but it's not really a civilization build game there will be times you will be building something then there will be a destruction so there will be ups and downs in this game and you will be using bidding mechanism for that so uh, that kind of concept is really new and um, how the game is being portrayed it would be very funny or fun uh, to say to actually play that out with a group of friends so that's why my number one most excited game for which i'm excited is called empires and from john declare so that's it my most anticipated games that are going to be revealed or uh, being exposed or shown at the June conventions, which is the Origins Fair and UK Game Expo. Now, what are you excited about? Don't forget to leave in a comment that maybe you are excited about some other comments. Maybe you are excited about some other aspect of the convention that you want to see. Uh, so uh, I hope if you're going to any of these conventions, you have a lovely time. But if you're not, then there will be enough online coverage, hopefully, to uh, keep you in touch with all the news. Uh, hopefully, this was an interesting session for you. That's it for me. Happy gaming.